history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Breaking news this midday involving Houston ISD. We are now hearing from the FBI after agents descended on the district's headquarters. Just ahead, we are live with what they're saying. Also, the coronavirus crisis. This morning, one country is shutting down all schools as rattled investors on Wall Street continue a sell-off that's causing the down to tank for another day. Plus, we've got new information on the breaking news that we brought you earlier this morning. We now know who was behind the wheel of a car that crashed right into a fire station and injured a firefighter inside. But we begin with that breaking news. FBI agents descend on the headquarters of the state's largest school district. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Christine Noel. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. This investigation started earlier this morning at HISD's Hattie Mae Educational Support Center in Northwest Houston. Channel 2's Brittany Jeffers is there now live this morning with the very latest so, Brittany, tell us what you've learned. Well, we just received an update within the hour from a representative with the FBI. But as you mentioned, this is an active investigation. Just three minutes ago, we saw some of the agents walk right out of the front of this building. We saw them walk over to this black SUV here with several boxes in hand. Uh, we're told here that they got around, they arrived here, excuse me, around 830 this morning and they'll likely be here for quite a while. Now, when we arrived at 930, we did see agents walking in and out of the building. As I mentioned, they've been coming and going throughout the morning and uh, we did just recently get an update from a spokesperson for the FBI Houston field office. This is what she had to say about the investigation. The FBI is here today to conduct a court authorized uh, legal action. They are going to be here for a while to carry out those duties. There is no threat to the public, to the students, to the staff at this time. And once there is more information that's made publicly available, the FBI will be happy to discuss it with you. And so we, we did go inside HISD and ask anyone from the district if they'd answer our question. They declined, but we did receive this statement which says HISD can confirm the FBI is in the Hattie Mae White Educational Support Center this morning regarding a court authorized law enforcement matter. The district is fully cooperating. There is no danger to students, staff, or the community. Now again, as I mentioned, we have seen FBI agents. We also saw uh, someone walking with an IRS uh, jacket 
out here as well this morning. Now we are told uh, that we may receive another update later on this afternoon. But one thing we do want to point out that both the FBI and HISD reiterated is that the staff, the students and the community, no one is in any danger at this point. We're reporting live on Brittany Jeffers, KPRC Channel 2 News. We will, of course, continue to be on top of this story all day long. And for any updates, make sure you check out our website, click to Houston.com. The story is right there on the homepage, and it's also on the KPRC News app. Turning now to our forecast, the sun is shining. The wind has died down significantly yes. since yesterday, which is a, a progress. It is yeah. a huge plus, and it looks I, gorgeous. I think there's no one in all of Southeast Texas going to complain about the weather today. After all, it is late February, and we've got sunny skies and temperatures now in the 50s 51 at Bush Katy 52 as well as Hobby and Galveston those temperatures pretty comfortable when you take the wind out of it right so sunny and cool for this afternoon as well this evening you're gonna need your jackets wherever you're gonna go and then tomorrow more sun and a big warm-up on the way I think you'll enjoy that right now let's look at some of the other temperatures around the area 49 in Cleveland so we're still in the 40s there Liberty as well 52 in Columbus Brenham is at 50 Huntsville 48 but along the coast we're right locked in at those 50 52, 52, and the wind right now mostly from the north, six and four miles an hour, which is a lot better than it was yesterday. The hold on to your hat weather is behind us. And if you look at exact track radar, you notice there's not a lot going on. But in the upper levels of the atmosphere, wow, this orange color, that's very dry air. And that's above us, and that's coming in. It's going to stick around for a while. It'll be with us tomorrow as well, which will give us those wonderful conditions. Your hour by hour for today, then going up through the afternoon and evening. Close to 60 degrees today for your high temperature. It's a little less than what it normally is this time of the year, but nobody's going to complain. Sunny skies. That sunshine's going to last for a few more days as well. We'll tell you all about that in the 10 day forecast just ahead. Thank you, Cambrell. Well, we've got some new developments this morning after a car crashed right into a Houston fire station overnight. Police say the man behind the wheel of that vehicle was drunk and that one firefighter who was inside that station was injured. It happened at Fire Station 18 at Telephone and Lockwood at about 10 o'clock last night. Channel 2 Sophia Ojeda joins us now live from the scene with the very latest. Sophia. Good morning tonight. We got in touch with that firefighter who was hurt in that crash last night. He did not want to go on camera, but we do know that he had to get stitches in his head. He was rushed to the hospital, but then later released and he is recovering this morning. It could have been a lot worse. We could have walked into a, a more uh, sad situation. City of Houston workers walked around and checked out the damage left behind at Houston Fire Station 18 in southeast Houston. Police say it was this man, 38-year-old Christopher Rogers, who was behind the wheel. Investigators say he was driving while intoxicated around 10 Wednesday night when he slammed into the front of the fire station, ramming into a lounge area, tossing several refrigerators, hitting one firefighter in the head. So he had to get a few stitches. But he overall, he's, uh, he's in good spirits and he's doing good. He's, heading, he's at home. Captain De La Garza says there were several other firefighters in the lounge room right before this happened, but they walked out right before that crash. Uh, but besides, everybody's good. We just got to go through the cleanup, mm -hmm. rebuilding process. Again, that firefighter is recovering this morning. He is expected to take a few days off. As far as that driver is concerned, he's facing DWI charges. They could be upgraded to intoxication assault of a public servant. Reporting live in Southeast Houston, Sophia Ojeda, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Concerns over the coronavirus still causing panic on Wall Street. Stocks are plunging again in morning trading. Investors fear the outbreak will weigh heavily on the global economy. Getting a live look at the Dow's big board right now. Earlier the, earlier the Dow was down 800 points, but now it's around 500. Meantime, the virus has prompted officials in Japan to take a drastic measure. All schools there will be closed for the next month to control the spread of the virus. It will affect 12.8 million students at about 34,800 schools nationwide. We can expect to hear from Governor Abbott today. He plans to provide some new details on what the state is doing to counter the virus's spread. That meeting is expected to happen at 3.30 this afternoon. Olympic officials in Japan say they don't plan to cancel the iconic torch re relay, but the event could be scaled down some. They're working on ways to decrease the risk of coronavirus infections for the relay. The relay is set for March 26th, a few months ahead of the Summer Games.
Over the next few days, some 240 foreign and Japanese crew members who have tested negative for the coronavirus, well, they're going to leave the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan. Japan's health minister says that those with no symptoms would remain at a facility near Tokyo for further monitoring. As of yesterday, the cruise ship reported 705 coronavirus cases. Hawaiian Airlines is suspending flights to South Korea through April. The decision comes after a spike in novel coronavirus cases in South Korea. The airline flies five times weekly nonstop from Honolulu to Incheon. Hawaiian Airlines says it is offering re-accommodations on alternative flights or providing refunds to impacted passengers. Back here at home, a Precinct 8 deputy constable was sent to the hospital after being involved in an early morning crash in Pasadena. This happened at the exit ramp at Beltway 8 and Highway 225. We are told the deputy was responding to an accident when he crashed into a Ford F-150. His patrol unit suffered some damage to the front end, but the deputy, we're told, hit his head. He was taken to an area hospital as a precaution. As of right now, there's no word on the other driver's condition or who was at fault. Happening now, opening statements in the trial against the Arkema chemical plant are underway. The plant in Crosby exploded during Hurricane Harvey. The company, along with the plant's CEO and manager, is charged with releasing toxic chemicals and placing workers in danger. The trial was delayed after a judge determined on Monday that the prosecution withheld evidence that should have been handed over to the defense. Several traditions underway ahead of this year's Houston Rodeo. One of them, arguably the most delicious, the World's Championship Barbecue Contest kicks off today. Doors officially open tonight at 5, but we did get a sneak peek. This year, 254 teams will be firing up the pits for the three-day competition, some of them coming as far away as Australia get the opportunity to come to an invitational event which we've been very lucky the last three years. It's just an amazing event and just amazing how many people and how good the Texans are and the hospitality is unbelievable. Definitely is. Most barbecue tents are invitation only but for a $20 ticket you can get a plate and access to enjoy some live music. Okay, you can smell it from here. I right? know this morning it looks so good. Yeah without a doubt. All right, a very popular restaurant here in Houston and across the country facing some very bad publicity this morning. That they are. Coming up what Jimmy John's is now accused of causing that could lead to major backlash. Plus one of the nation's most famous brewery becomes a site of a deadly shooting. Still ahead what we're learning about the accused gunman. Plus, the battle for Super Tuesday support comes to Houston. What former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg had to say during a campaign rally downtown earlier this morning. That's next. You're watching Channel 2, Houston's home for news. Welcome back. Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg is campaigning in downtown Houston. He hosted a get out the vote rally at the rustic on Polk Street. Bloomberg worked to energize Houstonians before the last day of early voting. He says that he has what it takes to beat President Trump. I believe we need a leader. I believe mean, we, we need a leader who's ready to be commander in chief, not the college debater in chief. So if you want someone who talks turkey and who has a record of accomplishments on all the big issues facing our country, country, and if you want somebody who has the resources to beat Trump, that's me. The last day for early voting is tomorrow. We've got everything you need to know about early voting ahead of Super Tuesday on clicktohouston.com. Right now on the homepage, you can look at the busiest polling stations around town. Now to the latest developments out of Milwaukee. That is where a gunman shot and killed five people at the Molson Coors Brewery before police say that he shot and killed himself. This morning, we're learning more about the shooter. NBC's Wendy Wolfolk has a look at a possible motive in this case. Authorities are still trying to figure out what caused the gunman to open fire on his co-workers and then turn the gun on himself. We're a family here at uh, Molson Coors in, in Milwaukee, and uh, this is an unthinkable tragedy for us. This brewery has been at the heart of the Milwaukee community for 165 years. The sprawling campus went on lockdown yesterday after the 1,000 employees received an email that there was an active shooter in one of the buildings. We tried to stay together and made sure everybody was accounted for. Investigators have not released the names of those five victims or the gunman, but Molson Coors confirms the 51-year-old man was an active employee of the company. 
right now. The brewery will remain closed for the time being while those employees and their families grieve and cope with what's happened here. That's the latest here in Milwaukee. Wendy Wolfolk, NBC News. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says that it believes a multi-state E. coli outbreak is linked to Jimmy John's. 14 people in Texas, Missouri, Illinois, Utah, and Iowa have become ill after eating clover sprouts from the sandwich chain. The CDC considers raw and lightly cooked sprouts the source of the foodborne illness. Jimmy John says that it's no longer serving those sprouts. This news comes a day after the Food and Drug Administration sent out a warning letter to Jimmy John's, blaming it for multiple outbreaks over the last seven years. In California, an owl that was injured in a wildfire is back in its natural habitat today. His name is Ram, and he was released back into the wild yesterday. While fighting the Maria fire last year, Ventura County fire crews found Ram suffering from a broken bone as well as smoke inhalation. A wildlife rehab center took him in and nursed him back to health. And now you can see he's doing just fine and he's flying on his own once again. He is looking good. Turning now to weather. Cambrell is in with a check on that. Yeah, but I want to see him owl? fly. I want to see him fly. Hey. But, but, we, we were just so I, anxious to get to you. To you. So we can learn about what's That's happening totally tomorrow understandable. this weekend. So Absolutely like, hey. understandable. I know. <laughs> That's good. That I'm sure good. you can see I them fly on, on the internet. Click2Houston.com. <laughs> That's good. They are on fire, like our click 2 we'll family today. as well. Look at, Look at gorgeous. that shot. Oh. That's Psycho Granny. She is on top of it all the time. You start out like that in Bay City, what else is there, right? Really enjoyable. Here's another one. This is that time of the year. Nice. We're seeing a lot of these around. We're heading into Memorial Park for tomorrow. And man, oh man, they're loving the weather. We told them last week that we're going to have a weekend going into the weekend where it will be just fabulous. Look at our shot here on the Kaplan Zinus Relief shot looking at the Williams Tower. Brilliant sunshine, 52 degrees, winds out of the north at 7 miles per hour. That's it. That's pretty comfortable compared to what we've had over the last couple of days, right? And you notice humidity is really nice and comfortable as well. Throughout the area, still have a couple of 40s right now in that brilliant sunshine, 49 in Cleveland, 48 in Huntsville and uh, Navasota as well. But now we're kind of laying right in the 50s, the low 50s, 52 to 51 degrees. Now, the drier the air, the more it is likely to heat up. Uh, it's not going to heat up an awful lot, but I think it's going to get close to about 60 degrees. Look at the relative humidity, 27, 32 percent. That is really low, and it's pretty comfortable for those people who love low humidity. Of course, Houston's known for the uh, high humidity. It's, we, that's the extra sunshine and the extra you know, moisturizer we get on our face, but we're not going to get that today. Winds are variable, but they're not very brisk at all, so that's really comfortable. This is what's happening here. We have this high pressure that's well off to the north and settling in over us as well. It will be. This is this air that's going to be coming in from the north. The winter that we have, of course, the windy conditions that we saw yesterday, yeah, they're, they're a thing of the past. Going into tomorrow, though, we still have cold air that's settling to the north of us. High pressure settling over us as well. We'll start to see a few more clouds coming into play for tomorrow going into the weekend. <clears throat> But it's not going to, we don't have really rain, a lot of rain associated with it. This is Saturday when we start to see a return flow. So we get even warmer going into Saturday as we go into the weekend. But really not much in the way of any kind of rain. Going into Sunday, maybe a slight chance for a sprinkle, but that's about it going forward there. We're going to stay quite warm over the next several days. The Zach Track radar is quiet. We looked at the earlier look at the drier air in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which lets you know we're going to keep that dry air. Look what the temperature is going to be doing going forward. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, going up to the near 80 degrees again. So just as soon as we saw winter, we're saying goodbye uh, for a moment anyway. Hour by hour for the championship barbecue tonight. 50s to 40s. The wind's not very much, but you're going to keep that jacket anyway. Very nice conditions as you get ready to go get some barbecue. 10 day look at the forecast and you look at these temperatures 60 to 70 to 74 inching on up to that 78 degree mark with those slight rain chances coming in on Monday and then on election day Tuesday as well. Very enjoyable conditions for your 10 day forecast. Ooh. Do get out and take advantage of it. Look weekend. at that weekend. Yeah. Spectacular. Yes. Campbell, thank you. Thank you. Lots going on too. Well, coming up, a personal question. What type of smartphone do you use? Ahead, a new list of the most popular phones is now out, so you can find out where the iPhone falls on that list. And next, how the coronavirus is already affecting the travel industry. We are following some breaking news right now. Sky 2 over a home in northwest Harris County just moments ago. This is just off Highway 290 in Luetta. 
Federal agents have descended on that home, which is owned by Brian Busby, who is the HISD chief operating officer. Now, we believe this is all in connection with that investigation at HISD headquarters. We will, of course, have updates for you as soon as they become available. In consumer news, the coronavirus uh, outbreak is having a big impact on the travel industry. That's right, especially hotels and airlines. Marriott says it can't fully estimate the financial impact just yet, but it could be significant both to the first quarter and the entire year. The world's largest hotel operator, which is seeing low occupancy rates in Asia, has waived cancellation fees for guests in mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Thailand. This is going until March. JetBlue is also dropping change in cancellation fees through March 11th, even though it does not serve those areas hardest hit by the virus. Meantime, Apple's iPhone XR outshipped all other smartphones in 2019. According to a new smartphone model market tracker report, Apple shipped 46.3 million iPhone XRs last year. That is more than double the unit sold in 2018. The second most popular smartphone was Apple's iPhone 11, which shipped out 37.3 million units. This is something that a lot of parents think would never happen to them. Your child climbs on a piece of furniture and then accidentally pulls it over on top of them. This recently happened to a California couple who's now speaking out about the terrifying experience. Karen Waugh shows us how to keep your kids safe. The nanny had just put Eris down for a nap, and then after about 10 minutes, there was a large crash. Three-year-old Eris can be a little monkey. Woo! Woo! So what she actually did was take out every single drawer, and she would climb step here, step here. But this is something her parents never imagined would happen. And then it totally toppled over. Thankfully, Eris is okay, unscathed. It gave me chills, and it still gives me chills to watch that video because I think she could have died or her neck could have gotten twisted under there and crushed or she could have broken a bone at the, you know, at the very least. We've seen these stories on the news, but I guess we had just thought, oh, it wouldn't happen to us. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, a child dies from furniture, appliances, or TVs tipping over every two weeks in the U.S. And 20,000 kids are injured this way each year. Immediately, we had a handyman come and install these steel furniture cables onto the back. If I go like this, now the drawers don't even come out. It won't fall off the wall and she'd be secure from it falling. The CPSC urges parents to do what they did with straps available at any home improvement store. Once you have a baby to start anchoring the furniture to the wall because it could be someone who starts climbing a little bit earlier than you recognize and then that's right when the danger happens. Whoa. Yeah, everything is a playground for those kids, right? I know. Well, it's become an easy and a convenient way to get around Houston using a rideshare service. But at what cost? Coming up, we're going to have a closer look at the rising reports of attacks on passengers and what you can do to stay safe before you get in that car. Plus, the coronavirus has gone global. Ahead, the latest on the efforts to fight the pandemic from countries all around the world. And a reminder, you can plan your route around town today and what in our new section of our website called What's Driving Houston. There you will find an interactive map showing you any backup spots around town, including maps showing you the inbound and outbound drive times. Just go to clicktohouston.com slash traffic to find all of that. Time right now is 1127. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Well, welcome back to Midday. She's tonight. I'm Christine. We certainly appreciate you joining us. And here's a look at some of the morning's other big stories. We're monitoring an FBI investigation at a Houston ISD administration building. Agents have been walking in and out of the Hattie Mae White Center in northwest Houston all morning long. Now, what they are investigating is still unknown at this time. In a statement, though, the district says it is fully cooperating and there is no danger to students, staff, or the community. In southeast Houston, a firefighter is recovering and a driver is in handcuffs after he crashed his car into a fire station. Investigators say Christopher Rogers was intoxicated when he slammed into the front of fire station 18 on Telephone Road. The car rammed into a lounge area, injuring one firefighter who cut his forehead, according to the chief. Rogers is now facing charges. Bond has now been set at $20,000 for a 19-year-old accused of shooting her 10-year-old nephew. Caitlin Smith faced a judge overnight. 
Smith is accused of shooting that boy while taking selfies with a gun on Tuesday at an apartment near Reagan Road. That child was seriously hurt. Smith is scheduled to be back in court tomorrow. The search for a missing 94-year-old man is over. Police say Richard Jennings has been found alive. We are told the search for him began yesterday evening after he spoke to a family member on the phone and told them that he was stuck in traffic along Emancipation Avenue. We are working to get more details on where Jennings was found and additional details. Now to the growing concerns about the coronavirus. What began as an outbreak in China is now threatening to become a worldwide pandemic. NBC's Ali Arouzi reports from London on the latest cases and how other countries are protecting the people. Troubling numbers are starting to emerge as the coronavirus continues to spread rapidly across the world. No country should assume it won't get cases. That could be a fatal mistake and quite literally. 13 people have now died in South Korea and the number of cases there are now 1,766, up from 1,261 a day earlier. That's a little over 500 new cases in just 24 hours, underscoring just how contagious the virus is. Hong Kong has announced additional cases. China confirms new coronavirus deaths and cases in the mainland, bringing the total there to 2,744 dead and almost 78,500 confirmed cases. Brazil has also reported its first new case in Latin America, while Italy seems to be suffering the most in Europe, with 447 confirmed cases and 12 deaths. And new numbers are coming out of Iran today. Uh, officials there are saying 26 people have been killed, giving Iran the highest mortality rate outside of China. We're hearing as well today that Qatar has issued a directive to evacuate its, its citizens who are currently in Iran, and Saudi Arabia has stopped issuing visas for uh, pilgrimages in Mecca. Ali Arouzi, NBC News, London. Turning now to our weather. It started off really cold, but it is turning into quite the beautiful day. Yeah, I love the sunshine out there. I can't tell if the wind is, is as intense as it was yesterday, but it certainly seemed a little less this morning. Ixnay on Done. the wind day. Okay, good. Done. Gone. Here's a shot looking at our beautiful city. Houston, Texas, fourth largest, soon to be third best city in the United States of America. You got a problem with that? I didn't think so. Look at this. Call your friends up in the Northeast. So they're just shivering. 51, 53 degrees, 52 Hobby and Galveston. So yeah, pretty nice conditions there. If you're going to take a boat out today, and today's the day you might want to do that. Winds are 5 to 10 maybe. They're out of the north, turning to the uh, uh, southwest eventually. So, so I have a little wind bar up here looking at from the southwest. Seas 2 to 3 feet. Bays are smooth. Swells 0 to 1 foot. That's not bad. 58, 57 degrees of water temperature. High UV index, of course, for that brilliant, wonderful sunshine. Sunset's going to be 617 later on. By the way, have you noticed that the, the, the atmosphere is, we're getting a little bit more daylight every day. Just in time, we're going to have the uh, daylight saving time kicking in. Uh, not this week, but next weekend. Here's your hour by hour. If you're heading down the island, it's going to be wonderful. Ignore this east, southeast, it's north to southwest. But it's 1 to 3 to 5 o'clock. Going to be going up to about 56, 57 degrees for your high temperature. Plenty of sunshine. We're going to take a look at that rodeo forecast coming up. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Cambrell. And of course, remember, you can track the forecast anytime you would like. All you have to do is download Frank's free forecast weather app to search KPRC in your Apple or Android app store. Ride sharing services like Uber and Lyft growing in popularity, but so are the horror stories. Thousands of reports of drivers and passengers or drivers assaulting those passengers in their cars. Yeah, so how do you know that the car you're about to get into is actually safe? This morning, we're going to show you what you can do before you even open the door. She is in a vulnerable stage. She doesn't have her best wits about her. He takes her to an abandoned parking lot, and worst nightmare, he violently assaults her. The nightmare attorney Michelle Tugel is describing is what she says her client experienced after a night out with friends, drinking, and watching a Rockets game. The accused attacker, her Uber driver. She was even with a friend, and the friend gets out of the vehicle uh, to get some food, not uncommon, and the Uber driver drives off with her. 
Tugel's client is suing both the driver and Uber, claiming Uber failed to conduct an adequate background check on the driver. Little does she know that Uber has assigned her a driver with a criminal history in her most vulnerable state. And that's the really scary thing. Tugel says Uber has different tiers for background checks. What you're seeing in a lot of the cities that have the upper end of Uber Black is that you're getting a professional driver with more background checks because they have a limo license. And so you are getting a safer driver. Basically, they are making safety a luxury. And safety should not be a luxury. Both Uber and Lyft have been sued by passengers who claim they've been assaulted by drivers. And last December, Uber released its own safety report, which found more than 3,000 passengers had reported sexual assaults in 2018. We spoke with a safety expert to learn some quick tips that riders can use before the car even arrives, during the ride, and once the ride's over. You should do everything you can to prepare to protect yourself before you even enter the vehicle. Greg Dupree is a 20-year law enforcement veteran who offers training for rideshare users and drivers. He says riders should always assume there's a camera in the car and they're being recorded. If you share too much information, the driver can actually use it against you in other means, track you down on social media. You also don't have to use your exact address. He can drop you off a house or two or even a, a half a block away from your home. Before you get into the car, make sure you have a way to get out. Check the window to see if it can roll down. That way you can always reach outside of the car and open the door from the outside. Where you sit in the car is another key to your safety. The safest position is actually sitting directly behind the driver. They're going to have to reach around, which makes it that much more difficult. And pay attention to your driver's actions during the ride. Is the driver nervous? Is the driver sweaty? Is he having conversations on a cell phone in a very low tone or a low voice that sounds suspicious? He could be actually contacting people that could be setting you up for another crime. Tugel's client did file a report with Houston police, but charges have not been filed yet. She wants other riders to know if something happens, report it. A lot of survivors call me and they say, I don't have any evidence. And I tell them, your word and your testimony of what happened to you that night is evidence. We reached out to Uber regarding the lawsuit, but we're told the company doesn't comment on pending litigation. Both Uber and Lyft have added a panic button feature, which allows passengers to dial 911 during their ride if they feel they're actually in danger. For details on how to enable the feature on both apps, look for this story on the homepage of clicktohouston.com. This is a story that Channel 2 investigates broke. A Harris County maintenance shed is being used to house what some experts call priceless art. This midday, more fallout. Investigator Mario Diaz has a preview of that story he's working on for tonight at 10. We are having difficulty getting answers. Answers not coming easy for the Harris County Attorney's Office as they investigate the secret stash of African art hidden in a county maintenance shed on the taxpayer's dime. There is no paperwork. No proof who owns it or how it got there. The county commissioner at the center of it all is not talking. Sir, I know you're walking away. We just want to try to get some answers, sir. Now, Channel 2 Investigates reveals how much the county has already spent and who else is coming forward saying they are owed money from the people involved. Tonight at 10. It is a place that many women in Houston have turned to when they have no other options. Coming up, how you can help the Houston Area Women's Center raise some much-needed funds all by lacing up your shoes. But first, here at 1140, a live look at Wall Street. Tonight. 
Well, in a little over a week, you have the chance to help a Houston area women's center raise some much needed funds. So joining us now is Chow Wynn with the center and Kenny Juarez, the head of communications with AIG. So thanks for joining us today, you guys. Thanks for having us. So tell us about this event. Well, it's our 32nd annual Race Against Violence. It brings together families, kids, survivors to support our mission of supporting survivors of domestic and sexual violence and sex trafficking. So it's a big event. We brought, we draw 2,000 racers and walkers. People come together to really celebrate and honor survivors and of course raise those critical funds to support our mission. Exactly. I was going to say, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about the, what the funds help out? You know, it helps out our crisis response, our survivor empowerment, our violence prevention, uh, the calls to our hotline. We have program staff and advocates who man those calls 24-7. And we don't do this alone. We need a lot of support. I'm and sure. some of that support comes through our community partners like our presenting partner, mm -hmm. AIG. This is why Kenny's here today. So yeah, why do you guys like to be involved in events like this or organizations like this? Absolutely. Well, AIG is proud to be a long-standing supporter of the Houston Area Women's Center in the Race Against Violence. Uh, the center plays such an incredible role in our community in supporting victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. In fact, we're expecting more than 2,000 people to attend the event next Saturday and take a stand against violence. Uh, and AIG has more than 400 employees that are expected to attend the event. Uh, and many of them are members of our employee resource groups, uh, including our women and allies and our working families of Houston. And all of us at AIG are incredibly proud to be associated with such a great organization uh, and the important mission that it serves in uh, ending domestic violence and sexual assault. So we encourage everybody to come on out and uh, bring your friends and your family uh, and support a great cause and a great event. And it happens on the AIG campus off of Wall and mm -hmm. Allen Parkway. They are our neighbors and that's why you know, we can't do it without our great neighbors and friends. Yeah, a lot of people have to come together for events like this. This is video from a previous mm -hmm. one. So why are events like this just so important to help your cause? You know, it supports the mission, but, but more importantly, it honors and celebrates survivors. We have a lot of families who come out there and say, you know what, we're really proud that survivors can come out and transform their lives. They also come out and honor fallen survivors. Mm -hmm. We know that domestic violence homicides are a real problem in our city. So we want to raise awareness. We we want to go out and have a good time and we want to raise those critical funds because we cannot do this alone. So who is this event for? Can anyone sign up? Is there age yes. limits? Nope. Kids race anyone? free, 12 and under, nice. race free. Just head to HAWC.org. It happens next Saturday. You can register up to the day of the race. The mayor is going to be there. He's like the selfie queen. <laughs> uh, king, I'm king. sorry. He's it, ready. It, yeah, I mean, we. It, it, it's a great turnout and we have a lot of people coming out. We'd love for you guys to come out. Which too. is so wonderful. So thanks for telling us about this event today. And if you would like more information, the race Against violence. violence is Saturday, March 7th at the AAG campus, right at the Whole Foods Market, Montrose. All right, let's go to Cambrell with a check now on the forecast. Cambrell, it's shaping up to be a gorgeous day. Yeah, after we started out on the cold side here, look at this. This is one of our Click Two Pins family members from Shepherd with some ice in the old water dish. That's not a, never a good thing, really, to think about it. Um, if you look at this, this is a shot here from um, Catherine in Huntsville with plenty of ice on the windshield as well. And then we went to this. Oh, that's the payoff. We get the ice, but we got the beautiful shot starting our day. Temperatures right now in the low 50s for the most part, 53 in Katy, 52 at Hobby. And look at the dew points. When you see dew points in the 20s, that means it's very dry air. And that very dry air is not being moved around by an awful lot. And that's indicating that the high pressure is almost right above us. And in fact, we pull out on the satellite radar shot here. We've got high pressure positioned, the surface high, right there over us. So the winds are not really taking shape in, in any shape or form in terms of north, south, east, west. That's going to change later on. But for now, it's just going to be sitting right over us, pretty comfortable, quite frankly. Going over the next several days here, look at Friday. You don't see much going on Friday into Saturday. We see more clouds coming into play on Saturday. No rain to speak of going into Saturday and then into Sunday and Monday. More clouds, but no rain yet. Now, some of the models want to call for some rain. No showers there going into Wednesday, but they're out of here by Thursday for the most part. That's Thursday very early in the morning. We'll see another chance of showers later on, but very little opportunity for showers going forward. Here's a future class cast look at the temperature.
temperatures. This tops out at about 56. I think it's going to be closer to 60, 58 to 60 degrees for this afternoon. Tomorrow morning, temperatures aren't going to be as cold as they were this morning. We're going to be 40, 41 degrees at Bush Intercontinental, 39 at Hobby. You're going to see some 30s, but they're not going to be very prevalent. And then going through the afternoon into Friday, we see our temperatures going up to 68. So it's not going to be any question whether or not it'll be warmer for tomorrow. Then going into Saturday, we continue to warm up a bit. Our morning temperatures in the 40s, mid 40s, and then we go up into the 70s going up on Saturday. So just all in all, a good weekend ahead. Exact track radar showing it. You don't see anything coming. And I'm trust me on this. We're not going to see much coming. Going on through the hour by hour forecast, I still think we'll get closer to 60. Uh, 58 to 60 degrees later on this afternoon. And then as we go down, well, if you're going to the barbecue cook-off, just be ready. It's going to get chilly tonight going forward. Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. We got the barbecue. We got all kinds of stuff going on tomorrow and Saturday. Temperatures 68 to 74 degrees. We're going to be nice and warm. Sunshine. Nothing going on at all that's going to be uh, a reason for you to be concerned. So trust me on this. There are many, many, many pay the meteorologist days in there. And I've decided that instead of paying the meteorologist, we're going to uh, ask that you, instead of pay me on one of those days, donate to the Houston Area Women's Center. Very true. There it's a go. wonderful organization. I don't, I don't need it. I got all these beautiful you people You get to hang out with us all day long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you, Campbell. Well, Energy Park, not the only place you can get some great food today. Take a look at this. Coming up next, an HEB chef is here to show us how to make some great meatloaf. Your first treatment. Oh, it's the best part of the morning. Cooking time with HEB. We have Chef Linda Rossman here from HEB. It smells amazing in here already. Thank you. And what are we cooking up today? We are going to use some marinades in different applications than we are used to. Cooking Connection this week has buy the marinade, get a buyer's best pickled item for free. Nice. So I've picked out some simple pork, boneless pork chops, and I, because it's rodeo season in Tex Fest, Campfire Cowboy. Nice yeah, little dry Campfire rub. Cowboy, I love that. It actually has coffee beans in there that have been ground up. So we're going to cook these pork chops up, but let's say you didn't have time to marinate them. We're going to take the marinade, such as the garlic and molasses, and use it in a different application by adding a little bit of butter to it. You're going to change it from a marinade to an actual finishing sauce, okay. letting it simmer for a few minutes. So that way it thickens up, it reduces, and then the butter gives a rich, creamy flavor to it. And then you can just drizzle it right on top. Right. So of pork chops. you didn't have time to marinate, you get home from work and you're wondering what to make for dinner, use that marinade now as a finishing sauce by adding something as simple as butter to it. That's how you zhuzh it up. That's you right. You know, it looks all fancy, but you're like, you know what, work smarter, not harder. And the marinades really are just a quick and easy way to really add a burst of flavor to your food. Definitely. And a burst of flavor is what we've really needed to update meatloaf. Yes. Grandma made meatloaf in an actual loaf pan. Well, the fats that tried to escape when they cooked couldn't. So we're going to make what's actually called a meat log. Okay. That's going to allow the actual fats to escape. I'm going to put a little bit of egg, house rub, but then I have added the Bakken brown sugar marinade. So every Bakken bite has sugar. Okay. flavor. So we're going to mix this up, onions. a little bit of onions and the breadcrumbs. Now the whole thing is after you mix it, you want to bake it in a pan like a 9 by 13 or larger. The reason why is we want it to be able to have that fat escape when it cooks. So what you're gonna do is make it where it does not touch the sides of the pan and it's more like a football or a log. Okay, so meatloaf is not a cake. You're not trying to get it to touch the sides. Right. You want to be able to, that, that's the difference in making the flavor really come out. Right. We're so like, meatloaf often gets a bad rap, right. but it's because the flavor is lacking. We have added some flavor and we've let the fat out, and this is going to cook in about the same time, but okay. it's going to come out so much more moist and flavorful. Speaking of flavorful, we just took a simple cornbread and added the candied jalapenos yeah. in there. So again, those free items can be used simply, but at the end, you're going to need some wine or beer to go of with it. Of course, yes. When in rodeo season, right? Yeah, and we have some pretty pretty appropriate names. Yes, we have everything from like the beers. We have the Mutton Bustin' and the Bronx, Bronx Stomper. Bronx Stomper, yeah. Little Back Pew. It's a um, brewery right outside of Kingwood and Porter. So this is a local guy. This is a very um, limited release. And then we have some of the gold, double gold medal winners and the gold medal winners. And if you are not sure where to find those, they are in our wine department, 10% off all of the rodeo wines. And if you open up your ad and flip it over, they have everything from a $10 up to a $35 bottle of wine that is actually here in our stores all the time. But take advantage, if you buy six or more, you actually get an additional 10% off the original 10%, so it'll be gonna, 20. I'm just gonna roll this all the way to my house for the weekend and I'm all set. 
Really, it's perfect. It's perfect for heading into the weekend. Thank you so much. You we are certainly welcome. appreciate it. And we'll have all the recipes on our website at clicktohouston.com. It smells so good. Trust me, you guys. We'll be right back.